in this problem, we're being asked to construct a proof uh, that has to do with angle congruence. We're given this figure uh, with lots of angles in it here and some given information, and we're being asked to prove that the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4. So this guy and this guy. I think the most important thing to do before you start to try to write a proof is to walk through in your own head and in your own way uh, reasoning for this. So see if you can understand it with your own intuition. Let's try that by looking at the given information. First of all, it says the measure of BAD equals the measure of EAG. So BAD is this one, and EAG is this one. So let me just draw on an arc here and put a little hash mark to remind myself that those two big chunks are the same measure. They equal each other. Then it also says that the measure of angle 1, that's this guy down here, is equal to the measure of angle 3. That's this guy down here. So at this point, it may have already jumped out at you that if these two big chunks are the same size and these two little chunks are the same size, then the one other chunk that makes up each uh, of these angles has to be uh, equal to each other, has to be the same size as each other. So if that's your intuition, fantastic. You've got great intuition. To turn this into a geometric proof is going to take a few extra steps, and we have to be very careful about um, about doing the math in the right way. I, the, the place that I would start here is with the given information, that first given information. Uh, so we'll say the measure of angle BAD equals the measure of angle EAG. And the reason there is that it's given. Okay. And then I think the next best thing to do is to be explicit about um, what makes up those angles. We've got sub-angles in here, so let's break them down so we have all the information at our fingertips. So the measure of BAD is made up of the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And our reason is going to be uh, the angle addition postulate. All right, and we should do that for the other side as well. So the measure of EAG is made up of the measure of angle 3 and plus the measure of angle, two, uh, angle 4. And again, that's just angle addition. OK. Now, with these three lines, um, something jumps out at me. I've said that the big chunks equal each other, and I've said what the big chunks are made up of. So if I wanted to, I could rewrite all three of those lines to just take the what they're made up of and set them equal to each other. If BAD equals EAG, then the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. That's a really good thing to do in the context of this proof. Uh, and if it's not clear yet, hopefully it will be in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. This is substitution. And I'm using all three of those previous lines. So the lines are 1, 2, and 3. OK, so that was a big step. And the reason that's a big step is because of this other piece of given information. It is given that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. So it's given. The reason that's important, if you look at line four here, I can, I can now substitute. What if I put in the measure of angle three in place of this measure of angle one? I can do that because I just said they're equal to each other. Then I would get a measure of angle three on each side. And I could get rid of that measure of angle three on each side by just subtracting equally from both sides. That would leave me with just the two and the four on either side. That's exactly what I'm trying to get to. So let me show you how that works. First, I have to do the substitution. So I'm basically rewriting line 4, but with the measure of angle 3 in place of the measure of angle 1. I've just done some substitution. So we'll write out the rest of that, measure of angle 2. Over here, we have the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. Okay. So there's my substitution. And let's see, that was lines 4 and 5 required to make that substitution. I just took this value and put it in place of here. All right, now we can just go ahead and subtract away 
that measure of angle 3 from both sides of that equation. So, and that's going to leave us with the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4. That's what we wanted to prove. How did we get there? Well, we used, um, I, I think in your list it'll be called addition and subtraction properties. I think they, they group those together as one. And that referred to line six. All right, so that is a proof that gets us from here to here. Just to review, maybe you've got this all set, but let's just go through it one more time. The big chunks are equal to each other because that's given. Then we show what the big chunks are made up of, the little angles inside them. And then since we know they're equal to each other, we set those little chunks equal to each other by substitution. Then we take that other piece of the given information. That allows us to substitute angle 3 in here instead of angle 1, which gives us an equation where we can subtract angle 3 away, leaving just 2 equal to angle 4. So that is a proof uh, that involved angle congruence.